Hi, my name is Erik Salvesen, and today I'll talk to you about immediate implant placement. In implant dentistry, immediate implant placement is defined by placing an implant at the time of tooth extraction. After a tooth is extracted, a dimensional loss of up to 50% of the surrounding structures is proven. Immediate implants and biomaterials may help preserve the gingival architecture and also reduce the bone changes as the healing process occurs. Now the question is, can we go for immediate implant insertion in all cases? Not quite. The literature indicates that immediate implants have the similar success rates as implants placed in healed sites, given that a number of factors are taken into account. By that, it's the socket morphology, it's the soft tissue biotypes, it's the presence of infection, the remaining apical bone, and the intact buccal wall of the extraction socket. Imidis E started many years prior to fully tapered implants. However, when those implants were introduced in the market, they provided clinicians with a lot more confidence as they allowed proper engagement in the bone. This means that the minimal primary stability of 35 Newton centimeters, which is necessary for an immediate restoration, could be achieved more predictably. Now, obviously, not all implants are the same. The material they're made of plays an important role. As we work with active insertion techniques, it's important to have the strongest possible material. For me, that's rock solid. This strong implant material enables me to use narrower and shorter implants and therefore avoiding more invasive procedures such as extensive bone augmentation. Beside the right material, implant surface is essential as it can have a significant impact on reducing the healing time. And we know that time restriction is a factor patients refer to when they're discussing an implant treatment. When an implant is immediately restored, you want the osseointegration to occur as fast as possible so occlusal forces do not compromise the healing process. That's why, in my experience, the SL Active surface provides me with the peace of mind that my implants will move from primary to secondary stability in a more predictable way. Tooth extractions must be performed the most automatic way possible, aiming to preserve the surrounding bone. Instruments like periotomes, specially designed luxators and forcepses are always useful. Apical bone must be available to allow proper implant engagement. The CPCT exam is an important tool to support this process. Through the CBCT, we can literally visualize the site in three dimensions, and this is not possible through regular x-rays. Now you know in which direction you should drill in the anterior zone. It will always include the palatal wall of the socket. Now, about the gap. In the past, wide implants were used immediately in extracted sites because it was believed the implant should fill the entire socket space. Today, we know that narrow diameter implants show very satisfactory results thanks to the gap left between the implant and the buccal wall. It is always important to use biomaterials to close the gap, as remodeling happens also in immediate placement. The implant itself does not limit the natural remodeling of the buccal wall, potentially leading to unfavorable aesthetic outcomes. In terms of biomaterials, I use xenografts as my preferred option and resorbable membranes. To consider immediate restoration, you need a minimum insertion torque value of 35 Newton centimeters. The drilling protocol may include under preparation of the osteotomy to increase primary stability. However, excessive torque should not be applied to the implant because this may compress the adjacent bone and may result in complications. So that's what I wanted to share with you on immediate implant placement. I hope it brought you something. Please stay tuned.